first. Health is a fundamental human right. Every person deserves to live a healthy life regardless of their age, gender, race and religion. It's World Health Day today and the theme for the year is building a fairer, healthier world. The World Health Organization is focusing on the inequities associated with health care. The organization says the COVID-19 pandemic has further exposed the inequality associated with accessing affordable health care for persons of different social status. WHO says the sufferings and illnesses faced by some groups of people are preventable and that it will ensure its goal of creating a healthier world is achieved by collecting reliable data, tackling inequities and acting beyond borders. Also, the World Health Organization says it will not rest on its oars in tackling HIV AIDS. Though treatment is available for the disease, the organization says its agenda is affordability and accessibility of treatment for HIV AIDS. So joining me now in the studio is the CEO, Nigeria Business Coalition Against AIDS, Isaiah Wolabi. It's good to have you join me now. Good to see you. Great, good to see you too. Thank you for having and, me. And uh, happy World Health Day. Happy World Health Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we expect our other guest, uh, Dr. Emil Kun, to join us uh, on Skype very soon. I guess he'll come on as we get along. But let's start it this way. The last one year has drawn our attention to new dimensions where people tend to forget that there were some very serious issues, health issues we've been battling with, HIV AIDS, one of them. In fact, it's special to Nigeria, issues like uh, Lassa fever and all the things that uh, people have been battling with. But how has COVID-19 shaped the way that people are acting reacting if we're narrowing it down to something like HIV AIDS? Well, I would say the COVID-19 pandemic mm. is not just a health challenge, it's a development and economic challenge. Mm. What that means is that it's going to affect all sectors, as we might have seen it, finance, education, technology, all sectors have seen the cut. And what that also means is that we would see an undercut in the response to other health issues like malaria, HIV and AIDS, diseases of huge economic burden. And when I say economic burden, that means diseases that cost us millions of dollars to respond to them. And uh, I would honestly say that uh, COVID-19 has had its own fair share in the response to this disease. And you know, uh, a lot of people think COVID-19 has come to kill people, but before it even kills, it actually causes poverty, it makes people sick, and then it does a lot of things like... So uh, it's stopping. not just the health implications. It's there not are just social that. Economic, it's socioeconomic economic implications. implications. Yeah. Hmm. All right, now, uh, the, the, let, let's even narrow it down to the issue of the level of awareness. Recall that in the 90s, or in the, in the mid-90s to late 90s, there was massive campaign to create awareness about HIV AIDS and, and, and all of that. In the last 20 years, uh, at least uh, the level of uh, you know, awareness am uh, among Nigerians when it comes to issues around HIV is there. We will say it's there. But we, we don't see that intentional campaigns against HIV AIDS the way it used to be anymore. Uh, are people relenting or are people taking caution when it comes to all of those prescribed uh, uh, precautions that one should take against HIV. Are people still taking those things? Well, I would say in terms of progress mm. and response to HIV, uh, Nigeria has had good statistics over the years mm. from uh, the most recent data that we have. 1.9 1, 1 million Nigerians currently live with HIV and AIDS and coming from about 3 point something million. That's good success. But also we must be weary of not letting down, like you're saying. Mm. Uh, over the years, you, we have invested a lot into HIV awareness, uh, counseling and testing program and treatment, uh, not cure. There's no cure for HIV and AIDS, but there are treatment that can suppress viral loads. Mm. We've done that, but we have seen that uh, presently the uh, investment in HIV has reduced also. What that means is that if we don't increase investment in HIV programs, we might lose these gains. Mm. Uh, right now, out of the 1.9 million Nigerians who are HIV positive, about 600,000 do not know their status. And many of this population, the demography falls within young people between 15 to 45 years. What that means is that that is their most 
productive years. Either they are in school, trying to get into employment, or trying to create their own jobs. And HIV, just like COVID, it's also not just a health issue, it's a development and economic issue. Mm. And once we try to slow down, then the issue comes up again. And we might not even be able to use the type of funding or resources that we use to combat it to get to this point to fight it now. Mm. So we cannot afford to slow down. Okay. Now, l let's talk about the issue of uh, accessibility and affordability of the, the HIV <clears throat> drugs. Uh, talk to us about that. How, how, are, how readily available are the drugs and, and how can people access them when it comes to being affordable? Well, I would say that uh, in Nigeria, for example, uh, many development partners, the private sector, uh, and also the government agency is doing a lot to make sure that the HIV treatment is available to everyone who approach a public health facility. Mm -hmm. What that means is a uh, primary health center, general mm -hmm. hospital, mm -hmm. or a tertiary um, health facility. And also, the most important thing is for people to even get tested, to know that they are positive. And uh, there are so many Nigerians now, about 1.3 million of them, mm -hmm. who are currently on uh, treatment. Um, no, sorry, uh, about 1.3 million people who know their status. Okay. Out of that 1.3 million people, about 600,000 people are currently on treatment. Mm. Uh, but we need to find the remaining 600,000 people who do not even know their status at all. Researchers have proposed or recommended that we need to carry out about 27 million mm. HIV tests to identify those people and link them up with treatment, mm. which is very important. Uh, who, who will foot that bill? The federal government or, or well, uh, development there are a partners? A couple of development partners and private sector organizations, okay. Nigerian Business Coalition on, uh, Against AIDS, mm. uh, is mobilizing the private sector resources and funding to make sure that gov is complementing government effort mm. to support government facilities. So when an individual approaches a government facility, okay. uh, you get this treatment for free. All right. Well, when we come back, I'm going to ask you about uh, how ready you are in carrying out campaigns to let people know. But let's bring on uh, Dr. Emil Kohn here, who is joining us on Skype. Uh, Dr. Kohn, it's good to have you join me right now. Now, let's talk about how COVID-19 has compounded the issue of uh, HIV AIDS. Can you bring us up to speed? What do we need to know? Uh, how, has, how is COVID-19 rubbing off negatively and compounding the situation of those who have HIV and AIDS? Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I was asking you a question, in fact. Okay. I, I was so, saying, if you can hear me, I was saying, how is yeah. COVID-19 compounding the issues of HIV AIDS? Yeah, so, um, like we say, COVID-19 pandemic has affected every sphere, every structure of our lives and the healthcare industry was has not been spared especially in hiv aids programming so um the challenges of the lockdown period the challenges on the economy because uh, before we had people complaining about accessibility of healthcare services as with respect to hiv aids programming Sometimes you see people tell you they don't have transportation to come to the clinic, pick up their drugs and things like that. And by the time we had um, the economic downturn, of course, what would you expect? But what we try to do to mitigate such things, we have some strategies like multi-month drug dispensing that we do. So when we have people that are qualified or are eligible for that, that you have somebody that is pressed, that the um, viral load is almost not detectable, and the person is stable, does not have any clinical complaints or conditions. Person like three months um, drug, um, you can dispense on three months or even six months, as the case may be. We have community pharmacy where you have um, pharmacy uh, outlets identified where it is close to where people are residing. So instead of coming all the way and thinking of the challenges of getting transportation to your hospital nearby to go and pick up your drugs, so you can just do it 
at the community pharmacy level. So these are the kind of interventions that, yes, COVID-19 pandemic has affected the programming, but we too are thinking ahead so that the effect is not um, too bad or deleterious or affecting and uh, making the COVID, um, the HIV is a pandemic too, making HIV cases worse for us. Okay. Dr. Emilko Namas, thank you for talking to us. You're on your way on a trip and you had to stop to speak to us on this. We really appreciate you. Have a safe trip to where you're going. Thank you. Great. All right. Now, uh, uh, let me come back to you, uh, Isaiah. I, I was going to ask you earlier, the, the, the issue of campaigns and trying to create awareness, uh, how, how readily involved into that are you or how ready are you and all your partners in carrying out that kind of campaign that delivered re the result in the last uh, three decades, I must say? Well, I would say uh, we're being more strategic about it mm. and we're using data to inform what we do. Okay. What that means is that uh, we're leveraging on insight from data to actually identify focus area and the best approach and strategy. One of uh, our approaches, uh, making sure that we are here today and also making sure that we are reaching people uh, where they would uh, see us. Mm. So there are key target population and high risk population groups. Uh, many of them include uh, people who make money from having sex and also young people who do not have access to this information. Mm -hmm. It's also important to note that the sexual debut uh, in Nigeria has reduced. Uh, so we have earlier sexual debut now in Nigeria. What it means is that young people now have sex at the earlier age. Mm. And we than need to be, to be. Yeah, than it used to mm. be. And we need to be weary of all of these. Are they having safe sex? Are they having sex with protection? And also we need to make sure that we let young people know about the right information. Mm. Uh, someone was just showing me an information yesterday about a center somewhere in Lagos saying uh, this is the place where you can find a cure for HIV and AIDS that uh, got the cure from his dream. Some of these myths and misconceptions can be very costly in the society. Mm. So we have to invest a lot of resources, making sure that we are also giving uh, the information in local language, pidgin, uh, in the peri-urban communities, rural areas, urban slums. These are some centers where we can see high incidence of HIV and AIDS. And we're leveraging on different strata of communication from individual, community, institution, and to the highest level. Mm. And making sure that we're also using private sector channels. We do know that private sector have the resources and competence right. to communicate at the lowest and highest level. All right. Now, so when, when it comes to those whom the target areas, the target audience that you are referring to, for anyone who, for instance, is watching this program now and finds him or herself in that you know, that, that box or that area, how would they reach out? Who are they supposed to reach out to and how? Well, it depends. They can reach out to us if you go to our website, no, www.nibuka.org okay. or info at nibuka.org. Okay. You can, can send can an get email. The help that they yeah, need. there's also a national helpline, 6222. Okay. Okay. If you call the helpline, either you have HIV and AIDS or you want to um, get counseling, you can get counseling mm. uh, for free. People can also reach out to us to schedule uh, counseling and testing in their community. Mm. We'll definitely be willing to work with them. And also, if you work to primary health care facilities across Nigeria, there are people trained on sexual and reproductive health and right to provide support. And if you don't uh, get the required support, you can actually call these helplines. We'll, we'll definitely make sure that they are connecting you to All the right, right sources. How is the government assisting or collaborating with you or readily creating the enabling environment because the point there is for for this work that is trying to get people out of that vulnerability uh, at the end of the day it is government who benefits <laughs> when you have a healthy uh, you know environment or healthy population as the case may be so how is government complementing all the effort of either development partners or private sector you know and NGOs and all of, and all of that I would say, well, the government is doing so much, especially through the National Agency for the Control of AIDS, mm. NACA. Uh, and in the last uh, report of the uh, USAID, NACA actually is one of uh, the government agencies across the world which got one of some of the best recommendations. And that's because uh, most recently, uh, development partners worked with NACA to conduct the National AIDS Indicator Survey, which is the most reliable data on HIV and AIDS in Nigeria today. And that's the data that is saying about 1.9 million people 
in Nigeria live with HIV and AIDS. Only about 1.3 million people know their status. About 600,000 people do not know their status. They are not aware of their status. Uh, we cannot do what we are doing today without the support of NACA. They are giving us the data. They are giving us the technical expertise. They are giving us the resources and access to community, to government hospitals, and the information on where we need to invest that will have the highest social returns on investment. If they are not doing this, uh, I, I don't think that the investment would make sense. Mm. Now, when it comes to demogra demographic spread of this population that you're talking about, uh, is, is it clear where, where they are more prevalent and where they are less, as the case may be, when, you, when you're putting Nigeria on a platform? Well, absolutely. Okay. Uh, if you look at the demographic spread or where we have the highest incidence mm. or prevalence mm. of HIV and AIDS, states like Benue State, um, Akwa Ibom, uh, and some other states. So states like Lagos, definitely the prevalence is low. But in terms of statistics, if you consider population of Lagos, yeah. so you can sometimes consider that the number of people living with HIV in Lagos mm -hmm. might be higher than the uh, number of people who live with HIV in Benue State. But the prevalence in terms of statistics, mm -hmm. that's the percentage, is higher compared to the population. Mm -hmm. population that means if you have one in 10 in one state mm -hmm. and you have three in, ten, three in 20 in another state. So three is more than 20, mm -hmm. three is more than one. But if you consider one in 10, that's almost in hell, out of every 10 person, mm -hmm. that means one person has HIV and eight. So, so how often is this review carried out to, to ascertain where, the, where there is effective in the campaigns that you're carrying out and there's less effectiveness depending on how you are reaching out to people? Well, I would say there's a national data repository, okay. re national data repository mm. which uh, is being uh, hosted by NACA, that's National Agency for the Control of AIDS. Mm. And what is also most important is that uh, development partners need to work together to make sure that we are not replicating efforts and to make sure that uh, we are reporting data in real time. So many people are doing things in silos, which is why as the National, uh, Nigeria Business Coalition Against AIDS, we're bringing businesses together, over 36 businesses, both local and international businesses, working together to end HIV in Nigeria. That way we can report data in real time and use them to inform what the next step will be in terms of campaign. Mm. Where should we go? We went to this community last time. This is what we did. And this is the result that we got. What can we do to step up programs in community with high prevalence and high incidence? Because prevalence is also different from incidence. Mm. So we need to consider all of this in the strategy and approach. We also need to make sure that we are meeting young people where we, they are. A lot of people complain young people don't read anymore. Then don't put it in books. Put it on social media, whatever platform you think that would help them to get it. Because communication is about people understanding you and responding to you. Yeah. People asking questions. So those are some of the insights that we're trying to uh, get from the campaign and everything uh, that we're doing. But I would say, uh, the, like they say, the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. Mm. Uh, we continue to improve. Yeah. Now, uh, mentioning states like Benue and Aquaibom, where you have uh, the highest in incidences from, from the statistics that, that you talked about, oh, when, you, when you identify the areas where these things are more uh, prevalent or more endemic, uh, what, how do you approach, what intentional strategies do you use to approach places like that? Well, there are um, a lot of things to consider. Mm. Uh, what are the social determinants uh, that contribute to these things? And also, um, what are uh, the uh, kind of incidents or occurrence? What do you see? Do you see them mostly among women? Do you see them mostly among young people? What is the sexual health behavior or the health-seeking behavior among mm. this group of people? Uh, like I mentioned, uh, one of... Uh, the highest incidence of HIV that we see in Nigeria today is among sex workers, mm -hmm. uh, also among people, men who have sex with men. Also, that's among the groups where we have some of the highest incidence. And over 80 or 90 percent of uh, HIV is being transmitted to sexual intercourse. So we can somehow pin it now. And also, uh, where do we find it? Who are the key target population? And how do we get information and services to them? Uh, for some of these community, it could be social economic issue. That's one of the leading uh, predisposing factors. For some of them, it could be 
access to healthcare and access to health information, especially correct health information, which is very um, important for these people to uh, have access to. Uh, for some of the community, to, it could be issues related to stigmatization and right. Imagine a young person going into a health facility and they are like, oh, you look at you, you're so young, why are you coming here to ask about condoms? So that means they are getting double stigmatization, mm -hmm. one from their community and secondly uh, from uh, the health facility. We also see incidences where people actually forget people living with HIV and AIDS and then there could be mental health issue where they think that they need to take revenge on the society who has mm -hmm. given it to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of them, a uh, very small group of them, think that they can go ahead to have unprotected mm -hmm. sex. As a way of deliberately... As a way of know, deliberately spreading it on. Though, well, uh, states like Lagos are very good law related to that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a crime in Lagos state yeah. for someone who is HIV positive to deliberately mm -hmm. spread oh. yeah, HIV and AIDS. All right, Isaiah Wallaby, thank you so much for what you do and thank you for talking to us on this. I believe that because of uh, how central this, this message is for people out there, we'll have to arrange a time again for you to come for us to talk to the people and then create more awareness. Thank you so much. Thank for you very me. much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.